Good morning, everybody. How are you today? Typical Monday morning. There's lots of stuff going on. Okay. I think we're good. <laughs> good morning, Kim. How are you? So we're going to do a little mini canvas here. I was inspired to do this by a couple of things. Let me see if I can get one. There we go. I got it without messing up the camera. Good morning, Koi. How are you? Lola, good morning. All right. So, um, I know, as you all know, um, the holidays are coming up. And good morning, Carol. Hey, Cindy. Um, and, you know, I don't know about you guys, but I love to make handmade Christmas presents. Um, I am good. I went out for a walk this morning in the rain and I got soaking wet and it was so much fun. And there's a video for that coming up uh, straight to YouTube. So anyway, Christmas is coming up and, you know, I love to make homemade gifts. I'm not high. I'm not really um, into doing lots of shopping at Christmas, which is funny because I've been in the retail business for a long time. <laughs> but maybe that's why I don't like to do lots of shopping. Um... Recently for Pass the Brush, I did this little small 4x4 four four canvas. I think it's 4x4. Four four. It might be 3x3. Three three. I don't know. It's a little mini canvas. Um, for Pass the Brush where we did it. No, it's 4x4. Four four. We did it for Inspired by Bob Ross. And I did this little mini landscape. And I actually bought more than one of these. And I thought that we would continue along that line. I've got to make some of these for Christmas gifts anyway. So I thought I would inspire you guys to do the same. These little mini canvases are really cheap. Um, they come in a two-pack at Hobby Lobby for $4.99. And um, they're fun to do, and they're quick and easy because they're so small. And you can do lots of different things on them. So I thought for um, the Monday with Deco Arts that we have between now and the holidays that I would do a mini canvas every other week because we do Monday with Deco Art every other week. Um, and today I thought I got a lot of questions about we're doing sunflowers with watercolor Wednesday this coming Wednesday. I got a lot of questions for people about how to do about doing sunflowers in acrylic. So I thought, well, let's do a sunflower. So we're going to do a sunflower. So I've got my blank canvas here and this is just a number two pencil. This is a Faber-Castell, one of their jumbo pencils, but any number two pencil it doesn't have to be anything fancy. And the first thing you want to do is just draw, you know, your flower center on the canvas. Now remember, we're working with acrylic paint. So if you get lots of sketchy lines here with the graphite, it doesn't matter. We're working with lots of acrylic paint and it's going to cover it right up. No worries. And for right now, we're going to just do one sunflower. You, of course, after you get the hang of it, can do more than one, but we're going to just do the one. Then we're going to put some petals. Now remember, nature is not even and straight, so you know you don't need your petals to all be exactly the same shape, size. Um, they're not going to be in nature, so they shouldn't be in your painting. And um, if you make them irregular, they're, it's going to just give it that more of a look of uh, realism. And definitely I would, in the, in the case of something like this, I would give yourself a guide by drawing your sunflower. Now, of course, you could get a picture of a sunflower and you could trace it on with some transfer paper. Deco Art has some really great transfer paper in both black and white um, that you could get. You could use carbon paper, too. Okay, and then I'm going to go behind, I'm going to put another round of petals. Nothing complicated, this should be pretty easy. And you know, don't be afraid, you notice I'm turning the canvas. It's easier, remember I'm the lazy crafter. <laughs> easier it's what I'm gonna do so there we've got our little basic drawing nothing too complicated I have some deco art artist traditions colors I forgot to get out my palette let's see if I can grab one of them 
Got it. Yay. <laughs> All right. I'm going to move my tights around. Okay, so we're going to start with doing the background. Thank you. Um, you know I like to do the background first because then later on as we do our focal point, then I don't have to worry about touching up the background. So I'm going to use some DecoArt Traditions. This is Aquamarine. And I'm going to use some opaque white. You can get this little um, sample pack of artist, uh, their Traditions paints. I think there's 12 bottles, and it comes with a couple of mediums. Um, it's a great way to try their artist acrylic paints, which I like. They're very affordable. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of a darker blue in here. I'm, I'm going to use phthalo blue. There we go. So this is what my palette looks like right here. And I'm going to just take a large flat brush, not large, but I mean large for the size of the canvas. This is a number eight flat. I don't know. This is a cheap brush. It says art color. I God knows where I picked it up. And it's kind of, it's on its last legs. I don't know if you can see that, but the, the bristles are kind of all splayed out like goofy. Oh, see, you're not even, I'm not even on camera. Can you see how that there, the bristles are all, so, you know. <laughs> but it's all right we'll use it anyway so I'm going to grab a little bit of the aquamarine and the white on the same brush and I'm going to just I, I may go over some of my pencil lines that's okay they're not precious or anything as long as I have some kind of an idea of where they were Now, when you're doing these, don't forget to get the sides of your canvas. So I'll show you what I mean. That's pretty. So I'm going to go into the sides here. And I'm going to try to keep my paint, my brush strokes in the same direction as the paint is on the front of the canvas. It just makes it a little more interesting. If you guys have any questions, I do have my iPad on. I don't think you can see it on camera, but I can see when you guys type something. And this will be on um, YouTube later. Hi, Koi, how are you? All right, I'm going to grab a little bit of that darker blue, just a bit, not too much. I just want to make the background a little more interesting. You could do this on paper. You could do this on a little board. You could make little bookmarks. Anything like that. Okay, that's interesting. I like that. Hey, Mary. So while that's drying a little bit, we're going to work on our flower center. And see, you can tell I'm a painter. I've already got paint all over me. No problem. It's going to be on Periscope for 24 hours, and later on it will be on YouTube. Within, within uh, you know, by tomorrow I'll have it up on YouTube. Okay, so for the flower center... I'm going to use raw umber. And we're going to have some da Dalyaride yellow. I do not know how to pronounce that. D I A R Y L I D E yellow. I don't know how to pronounce that, but it's a pretty color of yellow. These are DecoArt Traditions. This is Monday with DecoArt. So we're using DecoArt paints. Um, I like their Traditions Artist Acrylic Paints. You could use any of their craft paints, too, for these little mini canvases. And these are great practice little pieces. I'm going to start with just these two colors. And we are going to switch to a smaller brush. I'm going to use this smaller flat brush. This is a number two flat. That's what it says. And again, it's kind of warped and, you know, narfed and... I'm going to start with the brown. 
go around the edge of the sunflower center with the brown. We're losing some viewers. I think the watercolor um, episodes are more popular than the acrylic paint. Okay, and I'm just scrubbing it into the canvas. And I'm going to grab some of my yellow. The brown is still wet. That's okay. And I'm going to just put it, I'm going to say the sun is coming from this way. And I'm just dabbing the yellow on. Okay. It's really just a base coat. Now I'm going to take my um, heat tool hopefully without knocking stuff over. And we're gonna give this a little bit of a dry. Now when you're using your heat tool to speed dry acrylic paint, be real careful because if you dry it too quickly and get it too hot, it's gonna bubble and create a texture. Now when you're doing certain paintings, that may be okay and you may want that texture, but for a lot of things, you probably don't want that. Okay, so now two things. So be careful when you're using your heat tool on any painting, whether it's acrylic or watercolor, that you don't burn your fingers. I did get one finger a little hot right there. So be use a lot of caution. Also, when you're doing something like a sunflower, if you put a little extra paint here and you really kind of hold the heat tool there, being careful, of course, not to burn the canvas, it will start to bubble and, um, and kind of pucker. The paint will, and it'll create a texture that may suggest sunflower seeds. So that may be an interesting thing to try, and you might really like that. It might lend itself really nicely to your painting. All right, so we're going to go to a little bit smaller brush here because this is a little painting got a smaller flat this is like a zero this is really tiny can you see that okay it's really little okay I'm gonna um, I have my same yellow that dolly or yellow that I can't pronounce <laughs> I've also got Hansa yellow I'm gonna put out there we go and I have some uh, raw sienna, which is kind of a ochre -y color. Okay, so we're going to start with our lightest color. And I'm going to paint in these petals that are on the top in the front. While the paint is wet, I'm going to grab a little bit of my darker Deluride yellow and I'm going to drag it around the outside of the petal, up a little bit in the center. Don't worry so much if you get, you know, some paint like this in here. First of all, you can just wipe it off with your finger or baby wipe, but also we're not done with the flower center, <laughs> so don't worry about it. Now I'm going to take my darker, darkest yellow and I'm going to do this petal in the back. Now yellows, generally speaking, don't cover um, background textures well. They're very translucent. So if you're bugged by the fact that some of your background marks or pencils show through the yellow, you may want to start out by painting your petals out with some white. So once I get that background petal in there, then I'm going to grab some of my lightest yellow and I'm just going to go in here into the tip. I'm not cleaning my brush, mind you. My brush is dirty. That's okay. I'm going to get interesting marks that way, so I like that. 
So I'm going to just use a small brush. I'm going to go around my petal. This is a great time, my flower. This is a great time to, you know, just turn up some music and do some painting. Remember, if you also, if you get the wrong color in the wrong place, this is acrylic paint. So acrylic paint is all about layers of marks. So say right there, you can see the blue through the yellow petal, but maybe later on I don't like that. I can add some white and then some more yellow to that and it'll be just fine. So we're going to keep going, keeping the ones in the front a lighter color, the ones in the back a darker color. Farther away from the viewer would be darker. And of course it's easier to do these flowers, you know, on a bigger canvas. It's, it's a challenge to do it on a small canvas, but that's not a bad thing. I'm going to put a little yellow here, a little yellow there. Keep going. Now, if you want your sunlight to be coming from a certain direction on your sunflower and you're doing what I'm doing and you're turning your canvas around and you've forgotten where that direction should be, you may want to stick a post-it note out from underneath your canvas and write sun on there. These little paintings are really nice gifts, Christmas gifts, birthday gifts. And everybody has room for a little painting. If they're like me and you've lived in your house a long time and you have lots of stuff, big paintings are a different story. But little paintings, everybody has room for a little painting. Already it's looking good. And just keep going. I just got some Deco Art So Soft fabric paints in, so we'll be doing some painting on fabric too. Not today, but it'll be coming up. So I'm just getting a base coat on here. Try not to be too fussy with it. I like to be suggestive with most of my painting, whether I'm painting with acrylic or, or watercolor. I hope your guys' Monday is starting off well. Fill those couple of back petals in. Okay, let's put some yellow in some of these where we didn't quite catch up yet. Okay, all right. We're going to take some of our medium color. Now see what I mean about the yellows being transparent and it doesn't matter the brand. It's not because I'm using a deco art paint and it could be golden um, heavy body acrylics. Yellow just by its nature of the pigment is a very translucent color. Okay, so we're going to give it a little bit of a dry being careful not to get it too hot. We just want to get the shine off. So it's not completely dry, we just got most of the shine off. And I'm gonna I have this little tiny round brush, so we're gonna switch to that. 
I'm going to grab some white. And I'm going to do one petal at a time. And we're going to do the front petals first. Um, I don't always... Um, when I do seal my watercolor paintings, I usually use um, something like a um, Krylon matte finish spray, an aerosol. Okay, so there we added some white and some more yellow. I'm going to add some more of this kind of medium yellow that I have here. And see how I'm putting in these little streaky lines? And I'm not going to blend all that. I want that to be on there. That's going to give your petal some suggestion of realism there. And that's, that's what you want on all of your petals. So we're going to do the upper petals first, and then I'll go back and touch up the lower petals. being careful now to get our edges looking the way we want. I'm adding the white to sort of even out the tone of the paint that's on here. I'm not too I'm not too concerned about the set that center part because if it um, if I go into there I said like I said we aren't done with this so. Good morning, everybody who's just joining us now. I see a bunch of new people coming on. Chalk pastels are fabulous. I have a whole set of them, chalk pastels and oil pastels. Okay, so now we're going to go in with our medium yellow. Now remember, too, sunflowers, you know, come, there are some other colors of sunflowers. There's some, you know, ones that have some red and stuff in them, so... We're going to keep going all the way around. I really should have my reading glasses on, and I don't. Because, <laughs> you know, I always seem to forget to get them before we turn. I turn on the cameras. Our lightest yellow. Okay, then we're going to go with our medium yellow. And, you know, don't be afraid to, you know, put some just kind of brush marks and blobs and it's going to give your little painting some interest. And remember, you know, acrylic painting especially is all about layers of marks. So the more layers and more marks you put, the more interesting your painting is going to be. And what's the worst that could happen? It's only a little four by four canvas. If you mess it up, you can just, you know, start over. That's why they made gesso. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. And you know, there's a little sunflower painting, something bright and cheery would make a nice Christmas gift, especially for those that are, by the time Christmas comes around, are gonna be in an area of the country or the world that's all, you know, dark and cold and snowy and a little piece of brightness will cheer them up. Of course, I like dark and cold and snowy, so, you know, what do I know? But I'm from California, so I probably don't really know what it's like. 
That's what my husband tells me. He's from New York. Like Wisconsin, exactly. My husband likes to call us Californian, the pe that the, we're the people from the land of fruits and nuts. <laughs> He's not wrong. And I can say that because I'm from here without offending people because I'm only making fun of myself. We are kind of nuts here. Okay. So see, as I do more, more of these petals, look at that. Look how pretty that's coming out. So we're going to keep going. And while I'm painting these petals, if you guys have any questions, please, you know, I'm glancing over at the screen, so let me know if you have any questions. Good morning. Okay, we've got all our white on here, so now let's add our yellow. Bouncing around the canvas, um, you'll notice if you've watched me do my watercolor Wednesdays and now you're watching me do this one, you'll notice that I do, I bounce around the canvas in both watercolor and um, acrylic. That's because um, I want to try to finish whatever I'm working on without having to wait. And, you know, working on the petals while this part is drying gives us time to dry. Um, and then, um, you know, after I'm done with that, I'll work on more petals and that gives that time to dry. So bouncing around the canvas give, gives things time to dry So that you don't have to wait and you don't necessarily have to always use your heat tool. Um, you can use the heat tool and you guys have seen me do it. I do it a lot. You just need to, with acrylic, be careful that you don't bubble the paint and with um, watercolor that you, don't, <laughs> that you don't set the paper on fire. Guess how I know both of those things. <laughs> I try to have you guys learn from my mistakes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, exactly. I've done it. I have done it. Okay, so while that's drying a little bit, I want to come in with some green. And in this small set, I have the Stalo Green Blue, which is like a darker green. I don't need too much. And I'm going to start with it straight out of the bottle. Okay, but with a different brush because that is not going to work. Let's see. Something that actually has bristles that aren't like this. <laughs> All right, so I've got a nice flat brush. This is a Princeton um, Princeton Art and Brush Company shader number six. All right, so I'm going to pick a couple spots, and I want to put in some suggestions of leaves. I use all kind of brushes um, for both acrylic and watercolor, but I have to say if you made me pick a favorite brand, that favorite brand is probably Princeton. They make really nice brushes. They have, they're really nice quality. Now we're gonna put in some leaves or suggestions of leaves and we're gonna put them in before we do these back petals and that way if we, you know, get some of this paint on the back petals, we can touch it up um, when we paint the petals. I should have probably done this before I did the front petals, but. Hindsight is always 2020, right? And you know, it doesn't always have to be an exact petal. It could just be the suggestion of something green back there. And you know what? I like that. And I'm going to I'm going to leave that cuz I like the way that looks. Now, I'm going to take some of my same green and I'm going to mix it with some of my light yellow. 
to make a lighter green. And I want my sun to be coming from this way, so I'm going to take this lighter green not very light. I need to be lighter. Let's put a little white in it. That's better. So remember from our, you know, blending experiments, we were blending our paints, right? We were learning how to make colors last time when we were doing our charts. So I added my lights, now I'm going to add some dark back. Now my brush has no paint on it now, it just has some water. And I'm just going to push around the paint that's on here. Of, of, the, of the color chart, the blending, yeah, that did go up on YouTube, it's a recorded you can always tell the, the ones I did on Periscope because they always start out with recorded live on Periscope. Um, and I did put the color chart one on, on YouTube. So we're going to let that dry and we're going to let it dry so that we can do our back petals. So let's work on the flower center. And um, I'm going to get out some, let's see, I have a blue... Uh, we've got raw umber. Let's see. Oh, black. Let's do black. I like black. I don't use black a lot in my paintings, but I do use it. Okay. We're going to stick with this small brush right now. I like this little brush. Um, and we are going to first darken our center. So I'm going to take some of my brown and mix it with some of my black and I get a nice like black brown color. So it's not straight black, it's a little more interesting. And I'm going to carefully here go around the edge. But it doesn't have to be too careful. Remember what I said about nature not being straight colors, I mean straight lines. Nature's all about, you know, bumps and squiggles and nothing in nature is straight and even. So I'm going to outline my center with the black brown I just made. I'm going to clean off my brush so it, it's just damp with water. I'm going to kind of scrub at the edge of that paint to blend it in with what's already on there, kind of scrubbing in and moving my brush into a circle a bit. Yeah. So on the color blending Monday with DecoArt, basically what we did was we blended every color we had with every other color we had to figure out what we would get. Um, and um, it's a great um, um, basic thing to do. And it teaches you about what colors, what colors you can make with what you have. Now I'm dabbing in some of my just brown. And I'm gonna clean my brush off and I'm gonna grab some of my darkest yellow and I'm just, right now I'm just dabbing. And just dabbing the brush on here, and I, I like that right there. I like the texture that's giving it. I'm gonna grab some of my darkest color that I just made. Okay, that's interesting, I like that. Now, one thing we're gonna do is take, you can do this with a toothpick, you can do this with, um, the back handle of one of your paintbrushes, but if you're doing it on a little canvas like this, you need something really small. This is a clay tool and it has um, ball tips on each end. And I'm going to take first some blue. And remember I said I wanted my son coming from canvas this way. So I'm going to put dots of the blue paint in here to start to suggest sieves. Okay, 
Then I'm going to wipe off the little tip and I'm going to grab some yellow. I need some more yellow. The light yellow. There we go. Now see how you're getting different size dots there depending on how much you know paint is on the end of the tip you know when you first start it you get a bigger dot and towards the end you get the smaller dots that's perfect that's what you want do some white just like that All right, then we're gonna go back to, where's our little round brush? Is that it? Yeah, that's it. I'm gonna go back to the little round brush. We're gonna take care of these back petals back here. I am going to start with my darkest color of yellow. And I'm going to take some of my brown, actually, and mix it with some of that yellow. And while this dark yellow is wet, I'm going to pull some of that in. And then I'm going to grab some of the light yellow. And just wipe my brush off on my rag. And just kind of loosely blend it into the other wet paint that's on there. Like that. I may take some of this medium yellow and add a little bit of it to the Remember, these petals are behind the other ones, so they would be darker, they'd be more in shadow. So don't make them too light. But you can take some of this um, darkest color um, as you're working your petals, and if you wanted to, you could add some of it to there. Now, you know, if you get too much of it on there like I just did, don't freak out. Have a wet rag or baby wipe next to you. I can't tell you how many times I've done this on a painting. And just go in here with the baby wipe and remove all or some of it. Now I didn't take all of it off. That I like that. Just like that that's what we want okay and we're gonna work our way again all the way around the flower really you know wiping my brush off too much unless I really get too much paint on it and then making sure if I do that that I dry it off on the rag so I don't get too much water on here now you could add like something like neon something like neon yellow or neon orange in here to really give it a pop of color and make it look um, like it's really sun-kissed. Um, this I'm just I just grabbed a little bit of white. That's better. I like that better. Okay, so we're gonna keep going.
Now, if you did your background first, then you don't have, oops, you don't have to worry um, about it anymore. You just have to worry about the flower. But if you didn't, you're going to get your flower perfect, and then you're going to have to worry about the background. And since I'm lazy and I never want to have to do that, I always, always, always do my backgrounds first. Cranky Crafter, good morning. I still love that name, the Cranky Crafter. I so relate to that some days. It so resembles me some days. <laughs> Not this morning. I took a nice long walk in the rain. Uh, it was great. Stepped in a few puddles. It was fabulous. I had, had a lot of fun. We're finally getting rain in California, at least a little bit. Yay! <laughs> I know, right? It's a good name. It's a good name for Monday, the Cranky Crafter. Well, that's what I thought. <laughs> so just layering your colors, layering your marks, blending them a little bit, working your way all the way around. And, you know, start these things on these little canvases. They're way less intimidating than the big ones, I think. At least when you're starting out. Thank you so much. So you'll notice I'm blending my colors a bit with my brush, but I am not going overboard with the blending. <laughs> you don't need to, okay? Oh, cool. We're, we're still getting a bit. It was, uh, as soon as I got home, it started really pouring, but I think it's lessening right now. I'm in San Jose, for those that don't know, that are in California, and if you know where that is. Okay, I think we have to do this one still. So just keep layering your colors on your petals until you get something that you really, really like. And like I said, if it takes you a little bit, to get it don't worry about it just turn up your music and have some fun painting should be fun otherwise what's the point okay so that's looking pretty good now we're going to really give it some pops so I'm going to take, what color, what color, what color? I'm going to take some dark brown to start, but I think I'm, we're going to introduce some red. And I'm going to, this is the darkest brown. It's the same color that we just used in the, in the center of the flower. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. I'm just dabbing the end of my brush, tapping it on the painting all the way around close to the center on the petals. That's cool. I like that. I'm going to introduce some another color. Let's see. Do I want to do no, I don't want to do red. I want to do the red violet. Mm -hmm. I think I like that color. So we've 
we've got some red violet here. And I'm just twisting the end of my brush while it's damp so that I get kind of a little point. And I'm going to tap my brush into the red violet and get just a little bit of paint on it. Now if you try something like this and you don't like it, remember we had those baby wipes out, right? So then I put a little bit of these this paint on here and then I got my brush damp. And now I'm just blending it out a little bit. A little goes a long way. Now if you want to try this and you want to let what you've already done dry first, then if you did this and you didn't like it at all, you could wipe it completely off without disturbing the other acrylic paint. Have some fun with your painting. Always, it should always be fun. So you don't want to go too far before you come back with the water, otherwise it's going to start to dry. And you won't be able to do any blending, so. There's a little too much red, so I'm going to come in here. There we go. Perfect. Now you can stay with your small brush. You can come back in with the yellow if you get, you know, too much of a color. Remember what I said? It's about layers of making marks, right? Now I should really stop turning it and I should do it this way. I don't know, we'll see. I'm going to put a little bit of that um, red violet in the middle, in the center. It gave the red gave it a that you need a pop you need a color that's going to give it a pop and dimension and as I was painting it I realized that red violet was going to be the color now to also give the leaves some dimension besides just the flower thank you I'm going to go in with my blue that's black wait that's not the color I wanted. Oops. So I'm going to go in with this uh, phthalo blue that I have out here on my palette. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to add just a little bit of it. And then with a clean brush, I'm going to pull it out and blend it. Now, if I get some of it in the wrong place, or someplace I'm not so sure I like it, I'm going to come in with my baby wipe. There we go. 
you also can, you know, do a lot of painting and blending with your baby wipe. So if you guys have seen me on journaling Crazy Island style or there's a few YouTube videos, you know, I've done whole paintings without any brushes. That's a lot of fun. And that little bit of darkness just gave it a little bit of a pop. By the same token, I'm going to add back some really light green. I think it needs it. I like that. I'm thinking the back petals need something. I'm really happy with it overall. Yeah, not white. You know what it needs? I know what it needs. <sighs> Neon. So I think I think we're going to do the neon yellow. Neons are a great way to add pop to your paintings. So let's do that. So the sun's coming from here. See? Neon. I'm going to blend my painting marks a little bit, not too much. So if my sun is coming from here, it wouldn't hit the outside of these tips. It would hit, it would hit somewhere in the middle. I love your neons. See, that's what it needed. Look at it. Look at that. That's that's it. That's what I wanted. There you go. That's perfect. I'm going to stop touching that. I love the way that turned out. <laughs> See? And you can do these little paintings, you know, in about an hour. They don't take too long. Um, and if you do like all of the same subject matter, one year I did all little seascapes for some coworkers. Um, I think it took me two hours to do like 15 of them because I just did all the backgrounds, then I did all the water. Um, so they're a fun thing to do for gifts and they're a fun thing to do. Thank you, Mary. They're a fun thing to do to practice on. Um, and you could just do a whole wall in your studio that's just a bunch of these little four by four canvases all, you know, pushed up together like tiles on a wall. And these DecoArt um, paints are fabulous for this. Um, and Americana Neons, which is by DecoArt, they are have been my preferred neon paint for a long time. <laughs> they come in some great colors, they're inexpensive, and they work really well. The orange especially is usually the one I pick, but I thought because we're doing a sunflower that the scorching, this is scorching yellow. Uh, that was perfect. 
So do you guys have any questions? When I put this up on YouTube, I will list the paint um, colors specifically that I use in the description along with the DecoArt website where you can buy the DecoArt products. And, you know, use some of your 40% off coupons at your local craft shops to get some of these little 4x4 canvases and just play with them. They're, they're really a lot of fun. I've got to go get some more because I need to do a bunch of Christmas gifts. <laughs> now that I have my car back because my daughter bought a new car, I can uh, go do that. <laughs> All right, I think that's it for this morning. And it's been about an hour, and uh, I'm sure you guys are tired of hearing me chat and uh you guys all have a great monday you're welcome we will be back on wednesday with watercolor wednesday and we're going to do a watercolor flower sunflower so we're going to do a theme of sunflowers and uh i'll show you how to do a sunflower uh in watercolor and we'll work on some bookmarks maybe and um, another good gift idea and uh i'll show you some techniques for doing interesting sunflowers in watercolor have a great day, everybody. Go out and uh, do something nice for yourself and maybe somebody else because you both deserve it. All right, I'll see you later. Bye.